If you love the Call of Duty franchise, you are bound to have some opinions that nobody else agrees with. I'm B-Town, and today I'm going to let you in on a couple secrets. These are my 10 hottest Call of Duty takes, in no particular order. Number 10. Warzone is mid. Starting off strong, and I'm not just talking about Warzone 2. The entirety of Warzone, since the beginning, has been boring, tedious, and extra slow. In the time it takes to play one round of Warzone, you can legit play four rounds of multiplayer and drop like 200 kills on a bad day. I'll always have a special place in my heart for Verdansk. When it first came out, Warzone was actually pretty fun. It was 2020 and we were all at home. And for a long time, Warzone was propping up the entire Call of Duty community. Don't get me wrong, I like that it exists. It's dope that there's a free way to play Call of Duty and join our community. Like, that's pretty awesome. But the game itself just isn't good. And overall, Call of Duty mechanics just don't work well in a battle royale. Like loadouts. Warzone feels weird without them because create a class is a fundamental part of Call of Duty, but that ties Warzone into the overall meta and turns every final circle into the same thing over and over and over again. I can understand if people choose to play Warzone over 6v6. With the big player count, the outcome of matches feels a little bit more fair and based on skill rather than skill-based matchmaking constantly manipulating the experience. But the current state of Warzone is a total hot mess and even when it's at its best, Warzone is just mid. Number 9. Infinite Warfare Zombies is as good as a Treyarch game. Honestly, it's better than some Treyarch games. It has dope weapons, great maps, awesome boss fights. Director's Cut is absolutely next level. As a zombies community, we can get pretty snobby and kind of ignore anything that isn't Treyarch. And for the most part, that's actually okay. Exo Zombies and World War II really aren't worth a ton of attention. But I really want to give IW its props. The only thing you can knock it for is being unoriginal. Yeah, they didn't technically add a lot to it. They kind of took the winning formula from Treyarch and freshened things up, but they brought humor and campiness and tons of personality. Is it derivative? Absolutely. But that doesn't make it bad. It's one of the strongest zombies modes we've ever had the privilege of playing, and I think it deserves to be mentioned in the same conversation as BO2 and BO3. Number 8. Skill-based matchmaking can be a positive thing. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> As it exists in the game currently, skill-based matchmaking is destroying Call of Duty. Every game is sweaty like a CDL final. And it takes forever to even find a match because the system doesn't prioritize ping. You wait forever, you get 100 milliseconds of ping on a brand new game during peak hours. It's absolutely ridiculous. SBMM is obviously a tragedy and absolutely needs to be addressed. And even the name that we call it skill-based matchmaking, like that's deceptive too, because it has nothing to do with skills. We know from patents submitted by Activision that it's engagement-based matchmaking, designed to keep you playing and spending the maximum amount of money possible on microtransactions. It's manipulative, unethical, and a plague on modern Call of Duty. This franchise has always had some form of SBMM. In the past, it just had a far lighter touch, simply balancing lobbies to ensure even matches. And that was really positive. A system put in place to match users based on their general skill bracket should be something that's welcome and positive as well. Think about it like a bell curve. For the majority of players in the middle, SBMM isn't a great thing. But for players on the extreme end of the curve, it's actually really awesome. Elite top 1% players get very little out of stomping noobs. It's not even fun after a certain point. They deserve to be matched up with players who can keep up and make games at least a little sporty and competitive. These are players who pride themselves on getting better and they're certainly not getting better playing people who just bought the game. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, brand new players, children, people who struggle with playing online games because of various disabilities, they could greatly benefit from having a protective bracket where they can play, learn, and improve without pros dunking on them all night. That's also not fun. <laughs> So despite SBMM being a very negative force in the community currently, I think there's a place for a gentle, thoughtfully implemented skill-based matchmaking system in COD and modern games in general. The system we have now just punishes you for improving, and that's way over-calibrated. Also, kind of side note, when did getting good become so important? Are, like, esports ruining everything? COD's supposed to be a casual, fun arcade shooter. You should be able to jump online and have a good time without needing to prove yourself every match. Skill-based matchmaking being a heavy part of that this kind of overemphasis on competition is really unhealthy, and it's generally not helping the game grow whatsoever. It's actually creating a hostile environment for new people to join and actually learn how to play and have fun. Number 7. The World at War campaign is elite. People do not give this game enough love. There have been a lot of dope campaigns in this franchise, but World at War is top tier. 
I'm hesitant to call it a clear number one because that's kind of debatable. There are so many games that might beat it out, you know. But this is worth a mention because the current community just doesn't respect this game enough at all. It was brutal and epic and it had amazing characters. Reznov, played by Gary Oldman. Kiefer Sutherland also provided a voice. He came back in COD later, but we do not talk about that. You can play World of War co-op. You know, we just don't see that feature enough. Like what happened to co-op? It still happens occasionally. The last one I can think of was Black Ops 3. And Spec Ops is kind of like a dev gluten-free diet, you know, taste great, less filling kind of co-op campaign. So it kind of still happens, but none of those experiences are even close to the amazingness that is World at War. Coming off the World War II origins of the franchise, World of War felt like the ultimate expression of everything that makes COD a dope game. If you're new to the community or you just haven't played it in a while, hop in World of War and give that campaign a playthrough. It's seriously good. Okay, next up is something I didn't think was a hot take until recently. Number six, ExoCOD is pure trash. Skill gap D's nuts. I hate EXO. <laughs> that entire era was a massive L. Black Ops 3 is easily the best EXO game, but when you look closer, it had a tragically bad campaign, and the zombies mode doesn't even use advanced movement. So the multiplayer was really good, but that's a one out of three for EXO movement. There are some positives. Jokes aside, EXO movement was a natural skill gap that added depth to the gameplay. And in the long run, I think EXO was actually right on time. People were pretty burnt out on the core Call of Duty formula, and EXO mixed things up a lot. It made the game feel fresh again, and if nothing else, it, it was an interesting experiment that kind of gave people a break from what they were kind of tired of. But I personally never, and I mean never, want to return to the EXO era ever again. Maybe in some side modes, that would be kind of cool. Like, that would actually be, that actually would be kind of hot. Like, imagine if every time they put out a new Call of Duty, there was also like a dedicated EXO game mode version of it. That would be kind of fresh. So doing something to keep EXO alive would actually be kind of cool. Number five. Pick 10 was peak create a class. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Create a class doesn't get any better. On the surface, it looks simple, but every item mattered. Every decision was impactful. Your options were practically limitless, but you couldn't go full super soldier. There were some reasonable restrictions. You want a ton of perks? All good, but your gun's gonna be naked though. You're not gonna have any attachments. Because everything costs the same, just a single point. Everything was weighted equally and also equally as powerful. I think a great way to understand how wonderful Pick 10 is, is to compare it to the current gunsmith system. On the surface, gunsmith looks a lot deeper and a lot better, but when you look a little bit closer, you realize that barely anything has a positive impact on your performance. And if you do have something that has a positive effect, it always comes with something like totally unnecessary negative, barely noticeable upgrades. It's, it's almost like an RPG system rather than an FPS system. I would expect stuff like this in a game like Division 2, not in Call of Duty. But with Pick 10, you loaded your class full of strengths and powerful items and each one informed how you approached the game. It wasn't without its flaws though, like why does a red dot cost a point? Optics should be free, they're so basic, like come on, just give us optics. Number four, sniping doesn't take skill. Ooh, that one kind of burned. That one kind of hurt to say out loud. There is a culture surrounding Call of Duty sniping that's honestly kind of bullshit. Sniping and quick scoping don't take skill, especially in modern CODs on console with tons of aim assist. Come on, you're fooling yourself. Sniping is really fun and it's really effective, but it's not like skillful. It's also kind of like it's lost its cool factor. Like I hate to break it to you, it's not 2011 and nobody watches FaZe Clan montages anymore. I'm dead ass rusty and I got a couple of crispy shots with a naked FJX no attachments like how much skill does this actually take see that's my point sniping itself doesn't take any more or less skill than any other weapon type in call of duty it's literally not special i feel like that's also kind of like part of people's like journey as a call of duty player like you join the franchise and you kind of suck at everything you're camping around the place you learn how to use an ar and then eventually you'll graduate into kind of like the more specialist classes like sniping and shotgunning but everybody's going to go through that emo sniper phase sniping itself is mechanically very simple to execute I mean, maybe you'd have an argument if we wanted to talk specifically about sniping in Black Ops 1 that was intentionally nerfed to deal with the quickscoping epidemic going on in around Modern Warfare 2. Stepping back and looking at it objectively, over the life of the franchise, Snipers have actually veered way closer to overpowered than a tier of weapons that require some kind of like specialized skill to be able to use effectively. They dominated long range. 
You could drop everyone at mid range, and you can absolutely delete people by pressing two buttons in close range. Yeah, it's awesome to see a good sniper absolutely fucking wreck a team, but I guarantee you the players that are doing that could do the same kind of damage with an AR or an SMG. It's not like snipers are special or anything like that, it's because those people are really good players. They don't have some like expert level mastery of this like ancient fucking sniping technique. The weapons are good, good players using good weapons are going to be effective. However you want to find your player identity, like I support that, I respect that. But I have to push back against the notion that it's inherently more skillful. It's, it's fucking really not, frankly. It's, it's, it's the same as anything else. Number three, shipment is colossally overrated. There, I said it. It's just a death box. It's crazy and hectic and a good place to rank up camos, but it's not a map I need to play every year. We do not need a shipment 24 seven playlist in every Call of Duty. Just make another small map. Why are we still playing shipment in 2023? I don't fucking get it. Number two, battle passes are healthy for Call of Duty. Anything's better than loot boxes, right? Back in the day, the map packs were like crazy good, some of the best maps ever, but they split the community. By the time the last map pack dropped, there would be barely any players in the playlist. Battle passes keep the community together, that's fantastic, and in theory, just giving away free maps is also awesome, who doesn't want free maps? The problem is how the system is actually implemented. What is this Settlers of Catan horse shit? I just want some operator skins, man. I'm not trying to check the king. Once I make my move, queen will take me then you're free to check the king no run no i actually rarely buy the battle pass because it's always full of such garbage god is just getting dumber and dumber every year i swear but there's no way around it this is just a much more fair and transparent system that we've had in the past one of my chief complaints isn't necessarily with the content within the battle pass but it's how they gut the retail release and hold things back for seasonal content Launching with only like 8 or 9 66 maps is absolutely fucking criminal. Okay, my last take is coming in hot really quick. Just wanted to thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Number one, Ether is a bad story. The zombie storyline is an incredible example of modern storytelling. It's totally unique and a product of a decade-long conversation between the community and the storytellers at Treyarch. They'd drop a map with some lore, the community would go, react to it, theory craft, and then Treyarch would come back with another one and mold the next chapter based on the feedback they were getting from the community. They would expand the world, change the characters, twist the plot based on how the community reacted to what they were doing. It was like a call and repeat, a song, a dance, and everybody together created this incredible incredible thing that is the ether storyline. There's really no narrative that compares to it in gaming at all. I have a deep love for the Aether story and everything that went into its creation, but it's fucking bad. It's confusing, it's convoluted. Like, have you ever seen the timeline graphic? It's ridiculous. There's so many holes and contradictions and just goofy fucking plot devices. It's a story that's held together by bubblegum and tape and still barely makes any sense. I think one of the most inspired and genius moves that they made over the course of the Ether storyline was shifting to the Primus crew. Massive improvement and it set BO3 up to deliver a really, really strong story. Probably the strongest chapter in the entire Ether storyline. I love the characters in the world Treyarch created. I love the absurdly deep lore. And I also love that you can kind of engage Engage with the story as much or as little as you want. You can totally ignore it, or you can get incredibly lost in it, despite the fact that I absolutely love it. But I also shouldn't have to watch like a six hour YouTube video just to make sense of the darn story. Well, that's it, gang. That's all of my hot takes for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you again very, very, very soon. <laughs>